you want to learn how to light the background. In this course, we scrap all the unnecessary, overwhelming information that you see online today. Here's what you actually need to start lighting the background. My name is David Bischow. I am the light shaping expert at Prophoto Academy. And in this course, you will learn the different types of shadows, light pattern, enhancing the background. Different type of shadows, the importance of understanding self shadows and how to shape thrown shadows. Light pattern, how to control the light pattern and how that impacts contrast. Enhance the background, how to enhance the background in an exciting and natural way. So join me in this course and I will show you how to get started today, no matter the equipment you're using. Hello and welcome to uh, Prophoto Academy Live episode 6. Yes, hello and welcome. We got David here. Yes, and we have Anders here. And let's start first of all by saying happy birthday to uh, America. This is 4th of July and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, barbecues going to happen today and uh, a lot of fireworks and parties. So, uh, uh, a big shout out to the US and uh, to all of you that are uh, with us over there. Uh, today's episode, we are going to talk about... Uh, the sound is a bit, bit low. Too, it's a bit low, okay. Uh, so let's increase here, right? Yeah. So we're trying to increase the volume of the sound. And here we have the sound. Is it, does it sound better? Is it okay? Or is it too loud? Or is it no, too low? Increased it a little bit. Cosmin, uh, 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 please uh, confirm if the sound is louder and clearer and better. So we went, there's a little bit of lag there. Uh, I'm sure the comments will pop up and yeah. we can adjust it. But today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, how to light the background. And this is uh, from the course in, the, uh, in Prophoto Academy. You have the course, uh, how to light the background uh, in the fundamentals of lighting. And that oh, sound is great. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for the confirmation. Uh, and this course, th we cover a lot of uh, different topics and different ways of, of how to work with the uh, background and, uh, and also uh, how to work with different types of shadows and how to use the light pattern to impact the contrast, etc. But we're not going to, uh, of course, we're not, we don't have time to go through all the things that we actually have in the course. But what, we'll do, what we will do is uh, give you at least a couple of examples. Uh, so we're not going to do too much talking here today. Most of the action is going to happen over there, uh, where we have uh, set up some examples of how to enhance the background. Yes, and I just want to add that um, this is the third course, uh, how to light the background, and uh, I think that uh, how to light the background is the most important part, because uh, it's very important how to how to light the face and how to mix flash with ambient light, but to really get your pictures to, you know, raise that level and to really get that natural feel to it, then it's all about the background, which is what we are going to talk about today and which is in the third course. That's uh, and yeah. I want to give a big shout out to Hong Kong, to Jankov. I saw you pop up here. Hello, Jankov. Hello. <laughs> and uh, so we uh, got some exciting things happening over there. And um, we're not going to cover the kind of the standard uh, studio setups that, you know, with high key backgrounds or a black background, gray background, a white background. It's all about just putting a lot of light on the background and boom, you blow it up and then you have a high key background. This is more cinematic look or natural look. And, and uh, I know you have mentioned several times uh, that in, uh, in movies, uh, they're really good at lighting the background. Yes, uh, in movies, it's totally 
<coughs> forbidden to, to have a, a light that looks like it's artificial, right? Yeah. It's really important that everything looks like supernatural in, in, uh, in films and movies. Uh, and it's all, I would say that it's all about the background. They light the background. So the background dictates how the light should be on the face. Yeah. Because what you see in the background, that it was makes the, uh, you know, the, the whole environment, that makes what's uh, happening outside of the frame. It tells you the, where you have the windows and such. What which time of the day it what is. What time of the day, what colors you have will tell what time of the day, for example, mm -hmm. and such. And that this will depict why the light is as it is on the face. So yeah. the background is super duper important. If you want to go that route, yeah. the, the natural look. Uh, and there are a lot of good examples. I mean, just by, I mean, we've been watching some like a Maid's Tale or, or Game of Thrones, and even the, like out, outdoor scenes, and you think it, it all looks so natural, but it's all artificially lit with the tons of watt seconds of, of light. Or uh, maybe maybe just watts of light, not so watts. much watt seconds. Yeah, no watts. Yeah, yeah that's watts. right, because it's a lot of continuous light there. Yeah. Uh, but but it's really interesting when you start looking at uh, movies or TV series. And, and see actually what are they doing with the background. So there's a lot of stuff you can learn from watching movies and think about what's happening in the background and also how that is connected with how the, the characters are lit. Yes, uh, and I used to say that uh, when you want to create a uh, natural look, the, the light on the face should be connected to the background in some way. Like if you have the light on the background that it's from a window from, from right, then the light on the face should come from right. So you connect the face with the background. And perhaps uh, we talk about that, I think, in the course number two, with the kickers to bind the person with the background, mm -hmm, and yeah. even probably in course number three. So you put in kickers to bind with light sources, available light sources that you see in the background, and, and so on. So the yeah. background is, that is key, that is really, um, I would say, as we have said now for a couple of times, the most important part yeah. to create a really good lighting, um, a really good lighting. Yeah. And also another good tip for you guys out there uh, is that if you see something cool happening in a cafe or in a room, some reflection, some light, take a picture of that. And, and, and if you want, I mean, uh, ask us. I mean, you find us in Facebook. Uh, both of us, we are there, uh, and you can just send us PMs. Uh, we both have open profiles, I think. At least I do. Uh, I do too. <laughs> so yeah, and and send us a picture, and we we can uh, uh, help you and, and talk you talk about uh, some of the things how to recreate those. But because that's what you do a lot. I mean, yeah, you, that that is uh, absolutely one thing I, I really love to do yeah. to recreate stuff I see in in nature, uh, and just one to add one thing to that to that to that thing that if you see something cool in nature, take a picture of it. If possible, also take a picture from the position where the light is. Like where the effect is happening. Exactly, yeah. like if you have a cool effect on the wall, take a picture of the wall, but also take a picture from the effect towards the light source. Uh, the light source. So, because that is actually what you're going to see why it is as it is. Uh, so the the truth is out there. <laughs> but and you, and yeah. it's a lot easier to recreate when you're standing there looking at a specific light source and then you can recreate that by trying to mimic that in, exactly. in the studio. So um, nature does this all the time, creates cool stuff in the background. And that is what you, by shaping the light, by, cha by shaping your light image uh, and creating gradients and such, uh, you can really recreate this in, yeah. in, in a studio or not only in a studio, I mean everywhere. Yeah. Like if you're shooting a portrait in an office or wherever, you can still use that. So we have uh, actually a picture that we just took, which you should see on the screen right now. Yeah, it, 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 it's a typical, you know, what you can see uh, that nature does from a window to a wall in the background. And then the light on the face mimics, uh, not mimic, but um, is, is done to, to cooperate with that light in the background. So you have the background, and then you do the light on the face uh, based on the light on the background. So this could be like a window, and you have to the right, you can see the black uh, part to the right in the image that could be like a corner is starting there, a corner in the room, where it's it just the corner of the window that casts this shadow and such. 
Um, yeah. And we have um, Hans Andersson here uh, making a comment that when lighting for motion pictures, the light is uh, also, uh, motivated by the story. Uh, and, and can it be that the still images, we photographers, that we aren't used to tell a specific story? Uh, yeah, that, there's a point in there, because I mean, if you look at the picture that we have in the, in the, on the screen right now, it actually does tell a story. Uh, with, with what's happening there. You can see that uh, there's a window light coming from, uh, from the right-hand corner. Uh, you also see on the very, very right part, you see a shadow going through, which it kind of shows that there's a corner there uh, that, give, that throws that shadow. So, so here is a typical uh, uh, start for a story. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, and I, let me just switch over so I can see myself. I think <laughs> that uh, what, what Hans said there is really important, that the story can also be like uh, the creative palette. Yeah. Like if I'm going to take a portrait of you, I can, I can create a story. Why are you here? Why are you, or what, uh, what environment do I want to put you in? Why are you here? And that can, can depict why I'm lighting, lighting you as I, as I, as I, uh, as I does, but uh, as I, by as I do, <laughs> as I do. Thank you. <laughs> So the story behind the light, the story can enhance it. And um, what you see outside of the frame, that is the room that you are, that also enhances the story behind it. So I think that the story is really important. And, and um, you can have that as a creative, you know, what, how, should I, how should I light you? Yeah. Think like that, do it as a story, yeah. create an environment. Great. Uh, and before we jump over to uh, the studio, we got a question here for, uh, about commenting uh, the fast battery drainage on the A1. Uh, we'll dig into that with the uh, engineers afterwards, since we are not engineers, we are photographers. Uh, so we don't know all the technical parts of the products per se. Uh, I have noted though, when I've used personally, when I use the A1, is that sometimes if I, if I use a uh, certain modifiers, maybe if I stack several modifiers on top of each other and they, they steal, you know, one stop, uh, uh, half a stop. Uh, and actually, if you look at the, not the episode four, was episode four, four we have, uh, uh, we talk about light modifiers for the A1. Uh, we also go through how many, many stops they, they kind of absorb energy and uh, uh, or how many f-stops you lose uh, when you put them on. And if you stack a gel and a dome and a wide angle or what, what, have, what have you, then you lose a lot of uh, power. And then you have to put the, the, the flash on uh, power level 10 in order to get the effect. If you're running TTL, for example, it goes up to 10. And then you get less, uh, fewer pops out of it. So that could be happen. Or if you are using maybe the soft bounce and you are, you're standing a little bit too far away, also then it goes up to 10. So, so it's a little bit of, of managing the, the power levels and how many uh, modifiers you have. That will help you as well to uh, uh, enhance. One, yeah. one thing, I, I saw many people using the, the dome as an omnibounce. You yeah. know, you have the, the A1 straight up in the roof and you have put, put the, only, uh, the, the dome on and you think that you will get light everywhere to get a really big light source to create a really soft light. Yeah. But the dome doesn't do that. The dome creates a kind of small light pattern mm -hmm. in, in, in the roof or on a ceiling. Um, and, it, and if you have a big light source, it, it kind of uh, softens the light anyway. So you don't need the dome when you bounce it off a ceiling, for example. So exactly. there you, there you said, have a... Yeah, I, I, I would say the, 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 to, to, to enhance the... Uh, to make a big light source in the roof, yeah. it's better to put on the wide the exactly. wide angle yeah. to get a bigger light source and, and that uh, yeah uh, and that of course drains even more power because yeah. it's a lot of light that needs to 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 fill that uh, ceiling yeah um, that's true and i also see people you know with omnibounce outside aiming the flash up mm -hmm. outside <laughs> that's yeah. you know really waste of waste of <laughs> waste of energy but but b back to the technical stuff about a1 uh, the battery level we should talk to the technicians. Yeah, that really and then can. we'll get back in the comments and if, if there's anything else yeah. uh, that might bounce, uh, might be the reason. But that's one reason, I think. But uh, looking at this picture again uh, with the window, uh, it looks uh, really cool. And this is how it looks like in real life. That's actually uh, how, where we, we, you are creating yeah. that specific picture. Should we uh, maybe head over there? 
We should do that. Yeah. I should just take one sip of the <laughs> coffee. I switch over so you can uh, see a sip of the coffee. <laughs> and I will also take the Swedish <laughs> snooze again. And then we pop over to the to the studio. To the studio. And I will uh, come after with the um, <laughs> camera if and when needed. So, where do we have that camera? That one is over there. Hello. So you see a lot of stuff here on the wall. And most of the stuff on the wall isn't used. You know, this is just a show off wall here, here at Profoto, the Profoto headquarters studio. So what we have here, when Anders has switched over to the hand, handy cam, the steady cam. Whoa. Are it's you going to brighten this? up a little? Are you bit? on that one now? No, not yet. Not on that yet. one. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit. Anders dark. is Whoa. tweaking the levels. Here we go, and then we switch over to. I don't want to call it a steady cam because I might not be that steady in my hand. But <laughs> I think you look that. quite <laughs> actually you, moving smoothly. Uh, so what we have so here. Walk us through what's happening over here. Yes, first we have. We have a camera. A camera. Yes, exactly. And we have uh, the light head, Mr. Ken. Yeah. And behind Mr. Ken, we have a wall. The background, our background. Yes. And what we are going to do is sliding, uh, put the light on the background like it like if it was from a window. And as you can see over here, we have one flash, a D2, lighting on the wall, but we have all these flags in front of it. Hmm. And so all, it's, oh. it's not all of these. No, no, no. This is just, you know, hanging <laughs> here just to look cool. So you don't need all of these modifiers no, no, no. to, okay, good. So one light and some stuff in front of it to create those shadows. And this is how we shape the light pattern. This is how we shape the light so it looks like it's light from a window hitting the wall in the background. Uh, so now we, are, now we have really bright in here so we can't see what this is creating. But about here we will have a shadow and then we will have brightness. And from the top down, we will have this, this uh, angled shadow and on the bottom, at the bottom we will have another angled shadow that creates the shape of the light source. And it's created by those flags and those flags could be anything dark just to block, block the light. Yeah, cardboard or a black car <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> something just, that just blocks the light. Uh, and if I... I really would like to take an image. I would, I, would, I would like to show you guys the angle. And you see that I have angled these flags away from the wall. There is a reason for that. So let's go and see what David is talking about. Yes. You see that this part is closer to the wall than mm -hmm. this part. This part is further away from the wall. This will create the shadow will be, uh, the edge of the shadow will be thin here and go wider and wider. And okay. that uh, makes us believe that the window is, uh, yeah, you so know, windows we, do that. So if we go here and I start my wall here, I don't see the light source, which means I will not have, uh, this will be shadow. Yep. And as I move down, now the light source, this is exactly where the edge of the shadow is. Yeah. And then I move down. Now I see the light source. This will be light, 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 and all the way down here it will turn dark. Yeah. So you can also see in the camera the different angles of these flags. This one is really angled, and this one is is much straighter. Yeah. And this will create. Uh, y you can really set the divergence of the shadows or of the light. So depending on how much you twist this, you can get a totally different feeling of, of how high is the sun. You can get a totally different of how far away the window is from, from this wall and so on. So why don't we uh, take a picture of what we have now and I'll switch over to... Yeah. I take a picture. Let's switch everything on. 
Let's see if this one is... I turn this one on too. Oh, drain of battery. I'm so sorry, Anders. I forgot to <laughs> turn this one off. I just get another battery. Yeah. And David goes into the cave where we have our storage. Oh, hey. Oh, you haven't tell us, uh, told us uh, what uh, you have. A, you have a softbox. Yeah, I have a softbox. B one box. X uh, with a oh no B one, and then you have a two by three softbox. Yeah, two by three softbox. Uh, and let's let's just take this image just to see where we are. So now I can't see the image, so we'll I will just over run here. over to the computer. And so does the crown. Yeah, perfect. So I can talk about the softbox. The softbox now is angled like this and not straight on the head. And that is because I don't want to light up the background. I just want the light to hit the doll. And by angling the softbox like this away from the background, I don't light the background. I don't, I don't put any light on the background, but I can. If I do like this, then I can control exactly the contrast of the background. In other words, how dark should the shadows be? Just by doing like this. Yeah, so, so if I do like that... Which is, that's a kind of a normal position because now you are pointing, if I'm standing here with, with behind Ken, you're pointing him, the light so straight towards Ken. So that's a very common uh, position, I guess. Yeah, and the light pattern from the, uh, from the softbox, from Ken's perspective, the light pattern, also, uh, the, 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 the lit part, you yeah. know, the stamp of light over Ken, is kind of equal, kind of equal, when I do this or that. Yeah. But on the background... There's a big difference, yeah. It's a big difference on the background, because now, we're, when we are at the background, it will happen a lot more, because the whole light pattern moves like this yeah so when i twist the softbox like like this whoop, now it will be very dark at the background but can is still kind of the same mm -hmm. and now i move the whole light image over the background so yeah. i can really lighten up those shadows in the background so should we take one picture with the uh, uh, low contrast yeah where, uh, where it's really dark and i'll go over to our command yeah. station and I might be might uh, make him a bit brighter, but let's take this one first. So, oh, did you say low contrast? Sorry. Now I made a really high contrast. Maybe it was kind of the same as before. So the dark part of the image now is really dark. Yeah. And now we uh, lighten up the shadows, yep. make them less contrasty. I just move the light image over the background. I still want the left part of the image to be brighter than the right part because, because in the right, at the right part we have a corner yeah. and corners are always dark. So and now we see, yeah, there's a huge difference in how bright the shadows are. Yes, and if I think that Ken is a bit too overexposed because he got get more light, I, I just back this up. Up, up. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'll uh, we'll shift over to... Boom, this yeah. one. So I had a flash over here. Yeah. And just by backing up maybe to this position, mm -hmm. I will still have about exactly the same amount of light on the background, but Ken will be darker. So I just take, take another to see if we get a little bit not so hot. Yeah, no, it's not so hot. But the background oh. is kind of the same, right? There we go. So if I switch to the previous one, I have to, yeah, I'll just do the arrow. Okay, this one, you see the face is um, a bit hot and I knew uh, the new one, the face is darker, but the background is almost exactly the same. You can see that the light pattern has moved just a tad, but this is a simple way to con really control the contrast of the background. Okay, so that's uh, kind of neat, but um, uh, honestly, if I, if I look at the picture now, uh, it looks kind of boring. Yeah, so. you uh, are I so mean, true. It's a nice corner, uh, a nice, nice light from a window, but nothing is really happening. Yeah, and that is because 
because we are uh, shooting. If you come closer with the camera. Okay, I'm coming. Mm. And that is because we are actually have using a diffusion uh -huh. panel in front. And this will create uh, a, a unified light source, just one kind of big light source that mm -hmm. will create, you know, uh, all, all the shadow edges will be kind of wide, so it feels soft and can be kind of boring. All depends on what you want to do. So if I remove this... Yeah, so, so now we're using the uh, a grid, ho or grid and uh, filter holder, uh, but you could sometimes you see people just taking diffusion and just taping it on top of the... Uh, exactly, yeah. this is the... Uh, a very neat way of doing it, but you can, it will ha you will have the same effect just by yeah. putting some... But uh, then you have to explain there's a, actually a piece of tape there. Yeah, we do have a piece of tape here. And that is to create some shadow within the light image. Okay. Uh, and since, if, I don't know if, if it is possible if you uh, put the camera, you know, if you aim it towards the light source, can no, it be exposed strong. so you can see the different light sources? No, it's too, it's too, too bright. Yeah. But because we see the piece of tape there. Yeah, be because... So the, um, let's take a picture with that one and, and then we'll yeah, let's explain take a picture on the one. picture what is happening. I will lower the power of it because the power is like one and a half stop. Uh, yeah, since the, the, the fusion is eating some of that power, right? Yeah, so I go down by one and a half stop and let's see, three to one where we are at. I it goes good. Now some, some stuff is happening in the picture. Yes, what we are seeing now is that we get a little bit more, uh, all shadow edges are sh shattered. Uh, uh, is that the correct word in English? In Swedish it's called chatterat, in English it's called shattered. Shattered, yeah. Yeah, shattered. Uh, so, so each uh, shadow edge is divided into uh, uh, many to multiple shadow edges. And that is because the reflector is have many light sources, you know, from all the different angles, from all the different facets in, yes. the, in okay. the light source. Um, and nature actually does this all the time because you have often a window and you have often a window and maybe a curtain in front of it or, and maybe something outside of the window that will separate the sun into divided parts, so we get these uh, shattered shadows, and you get a bit more uh, live, it, uh, organic feel to the light in the background. So I just have to look at the background, so I can, if we switch back to the background, and I take this pen tool, is that one the pen tool? Um, or is it that one? Yeah, if you down, hold it down, then no. is it. There you go. Okay, so you can see this part here and that part there. There is a shattered light shadow in here. Actually, you can see three of them almost. You can see a bit here. And this is something nature often does. And you, you can see here, we actually have a shadow part. And this is the tape. And you can see also here is a shadow part. So it's a little bit more organic. It's a li little bit more... Uh, it's a lot of stuff is happening. And, uh, and all of that is happening basically because of that little piece of tape. Yeah, the, the, that mm -hmm. piece of tape is, is getting shattered. And we also get some shadows from... I think it's, in, I think it's interesting. Uh, uh, if you try to come here and try to... If you put the camera... in different positions, then you can see actually the, all the different light sources that we do have now when we remove the diffusion. It's, it's pretty bright there. I tried uh, and it, it's, it's yeah, okay. hard to expose okay, it. Okay, it's just a big yeah. blob of light. Okay, uh, okay. cool. Uh, are there any other party tricks you can do? Yes. So um, now what we've done, we created a, uh, a window light with a corner and we had the diffusion on and it created a kind of a straightforward light. We took the diffusion out and we get this uh, interesting pattern in the, in the light with yes, a little bit of tape and... Actually, it would be interesting to 
you know, you can put more stuff in front of the of the light to create even more organic shadows. Yeah. Uh, you, and you can use uh, different branches with leaves and branches with leaves exactly. And light stands is really popular too. You know, if you have a light stand, uh, it's really common to see that people use light stands because you can see those the knobs of the light stand. It's a typical thing you can see in yeah some pictures when people do this. Um, so this is something you can do. But like, let's use the light from the window on our doll, like this. So now we got a really hard light on Mr. Ken. And that is because the light source is really small. And I just bring my camera closer. Something like this. And I remove the main light, the key light. I turn it off to save some batteries. So now you're going to one light source. Now I use just one light source, that's correct. Uh, and let's see where we end up. Let's switch over so we can see. I have no idea about the exposure now, so I just have to take an image just to see where we are. How many stops darker do I need to go? I suppose maybe two or three, or I don't yeah, see anything. Yeah, start with at least two. Two stops? Yeah. Okay, here we are. Oh, this guy, come over and take a look at it. It looks kind of mysterious. Maybe it's a little bit... I think it's... Uh, yeah, cool. Pretty that well. was exactly what I was after. Yeah. So now he's standing in this direct sun. So I would like to actually move the shadow here uh, on the right. I would like to have the shadow, the black shadow back here. So we can get the feeling from that we have a corner, a corner or a edge of the window or something. So all I need to do is to move this flag. Now I am working. <laughs> it's more sound than anything. <laughs> That's nice. Now I'm working totally on the fly here because we have all this light in the ceiling. So I, it's hard to see what's going on. So I can actually stand here and just see where the shadow, okay, the shadow will, will be about here. So I take an image and just to see if we get any gradient to the right. Yeah, we got a gradient. Yeah, cool, we got a gradient. Let's just switch over to the last one so I can see how much light I lost. Yeah, we got the gradient. I will back it up just a bit and then maybe bring it a bit closer. So I just twist it like this, then I get it a bit closer to, a bit closer to the background. Oh, it's a little bit crowded here, with all the stuff in the background. <laughs> put you in a tight corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always put... You can't make it too easy for you. <laughs> always crammed into corners. So I run back to the computer to see where we are. Yeah, do you see... This bright part, that is when the, the whole flash is showing. This part is darker. That is because about half the flash is, is showing in this direction. And here we go with another bright, uh, even darker part. I think this is the light from the bounce of the barn door, actually. Ah. So if I just flap up the barn door, I think this will go dark. And here we have total darkness. Yeah. And that is where we don't see any light at all. So actually, I would like to try, I would try to get this shadow edge to be even uh, more narrow. I do two arrows like this. I try to tighten these two up, the two edges, so I can get the shadow edge to be even thinner. Then I have to move the flag. I have to move the flag. I think I take this one away because the lower one isn't showing, right? The lower one is out of, out of image. Yeah. 
So now I can move this one closer to the wall and this will create a more thinner shadow edge. Like perhaps that. And I take an image. And I run, run to the computer. A big difference. Yes. Uh, now I just want to move it a bit to the right. So we got the shadow edge uh, tighter, but I want to move this a bit to the right. So I just move the flag. Maybe there. It's much easier when you, you, know, <laughs> when when you, you, when you see. <laughs> <coughs> so there we are. There we have the. Uh, this is fully lit by the window, and here we have the shadow edge from that flag. Cool. So now I want to do a party trick. I want to make this a bit more organic. Okay, I think this is the time to move into uh, live cam. Or yeah. <laughs> Maybe I hand this over to you. Thank you. This is a must. <laughs> a knife. <laughs> and you need some diffusion material. Diffusion. Anders, do you know what diffusion material is? Yes, I do. And can you, you can please explain to them? In a uh, it's a roll of... Uh, Paper, it's like baking paper. <laughs> like baking paper. Uh, and you can buy those in, uh, in different levels of uh, thickness. Uh, thickness. Uh, like a full stop, half stop, 16th or 30 second of a stop, etc. <laughs> uh, or the 64th of a, yeah. uh, of a stop. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the thickness makes the light go, uh, go uh, softer or harder. Like if you have a, a light here through the diffusion and if you have a full stop this is a full stop then you won't see the light source through the whole there will be like less of a hot spot yeah actually there should be no hot spot that is the yeah. definition of a full stop yeah. so this will be the new light source so, so the and light then it becomes much bigger and then therefore softer yes. it's not the diffusion per se that's making the light softer exactly because it's only diffusing the uh, the light but you actually make the light source bigger. So that is what creating softer light with a diffusion. Okay. You get a bigger light source. Yeah. So if you have a thinner material, like a half stop mm -hmm. or a fourth, a quarter, then you will still see the light source, but will be uh, bigger than original. But you get, since it is a bit bigger, you get a bit softer. So the size of the light source, that is always what creates the, the hardness of the light. Yeah. But what also happens is when you light here, you will have, this will be a new light source that will bounce on the walls and the ceiling and the floor. So you will have new light sources that will fill the shadows. Less contrast. Yeah, less contrast. So you often get more uh, softer light with less contrast. But the shadow edges is uh, depicted by the size of the light yeah. source and the contrast by the environment. Yeah, exactly. So the, the additional light sources. And exactly. what's the party trick then? The party trick. You have a roll of diffusion? Yes, a roll of diffusion and we have some kind of stick. In this case, a C-stand arm. I put this on here. And I actually, you can use a, um, uh, what's the word, a shower curtain. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, shower curtains are really cheap if you don't, yeah. don't want to buy this one. For those in the, the US, way. you can go to uh, Target, Walmart, buy a cheap, uh, a shower curtain uh, in Sweden, you would go to Rusta or something like that, or Jula. And yeah, if, and, and if you guys who are, f are familiar with shower curtains, where to buy them easily or cheap in different countries, please make some notes in the comments. Because shower curtains, white shower curtains are super good for this. So I take this shower curtain or diffusion material and put it, try to navigate <laughs> by all these yeah. stands here. Yeah, so we kicked it up a, a, a notch today with the uh, number of stands and flags. Uh, so we made it a little bit more, um, uh, I would say, uh, advanced. Uh, but I know, because I know that there are a few of our v viewers out there that uh, will give them some candy as well. So now you are taking 
Now I will take an image with uh, just with the diffusion, but I think the <laughs> battery is running out of this one. On so the yeah. remote? Remote is dead of batteries. And I got two new batteries. You are so prepared, right Anders. So, two old in your hand and two new, new one in my hand. And there I you go. thank you. Pop this in. Power on. And it works. So I put this on and I turn up the power of the flash since the diffusion will take away some power. So, so what will happen now before I even take the image is from Ken's perspective, now we have a really big light source. Okay. And this will create really wide ang uh, shadow edges or soft light if you want to put it like that. But also we will lower the contrast in other words, making the shadows brighter because the light will uh, bounce from this uh, diffusion material and bounce into the walls and everywhere. So all the shadows will be much brighter. So I just take this image, three, two, one, and I will run okay, over to the Okay, probably go down. How much? Uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 maybe. So much, okay. Uh, points, yeah, but 0 0.7. 0.7, 3, 2, 1, and boom. Yeah. Okay, now I still will run over to the computer. You are welcome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so here we have this super duper, mega, super duper soft light. And now for the party trick, the knife. Let's make a mix of hard and soft light. By cutting some holes into the diffusion material. So we have the light source over there. We have the diffusion in between. And then we have Ken. Yes. And when I'm standing here, I can see exactly where. Let's go over here. Yep. I can see exactly where I should do a hole if I want a hard light source hitting Mr. Ken, a spot of hard light. So I think that about here, I want, so I just make I'll, this. I'll, I'll back a little bit when you start. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's really shot, dangerous right? when I'm shopping this up. <laughs> so I cut away this one and let's see if I, no, I missed that. Sorry, shouldn't. <laughs> now I have this spot of hard light. You can come here and I can show you how I missed it. See my hand? It, it's diffused oh, yeah. light and here we have the spot of light I just oh. created. So I just need to go a little bit more left to create a new one. So I will take this hole and so I start with one, just one hole just to get a reference. Something like this and to see if we, ah, still here, still need to go a bit more left. If I do, I have any any plasters? If I cut myself? Uh, no, you just bleed out. <laughs> so now here you can see we have this hard light hitting the mouth and the nose. Mm -hmm. so if you see the shadow of my finger, yeah, the shadow edge is really thin, and that yeah. is because the light source is small here. And when I move up, it like disappears, and that is because the light source is really big. So we have this one, mm -hmm. and let's see if I can maybe make something up here, bright part two, just a bit about this. With the knife, I'll do just a small hole here. Yep, we got the light here over the eye. Soft, hard, and super hard. I'm gonna uh, turn off the Modeling light. Is that A or B? B. So now we actually see a little bit better okay. the holes. Yeah. And the little one over there. Yeah, the little one over there. Maybe I just try to make it a tad bigger by... You see how big that knife is? Ooh, scary. Ooh, yeah. I okay. try to modeling light goes on again. 
So now we have made two small holes in the diffusion. So I will just try to take an image just to wait, see wait, where wait, we... Wait, 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 I want to go back to the... So we actually see what's happening over here. Okay. I go, I go down by like fourth tenths of a stop. So now I'm just focusing on the face. The light on the face. Let's see where we are at. Yes, cool. So do you see the, the bright part of the mouth? Yeah. I will try to... I really would like to have this part bright too. So I will cut a hole here so I get the light of this, this eye. So it will connect to this part. Okay. And then I will do some more holes to put some light on the background. Okay, so now you go... Now I'm doing like this, so I get more light on the eye. Perfect. And um, some holes for the background. I suppose that we should be over... Let's see where I am. Where is the light? There is the light. Okay, so I try to make some interesting holes here. Now I'm just doing it totally randomly. I have no idea where they will, where this one will end up. Just like Mother Nature. And this is actually something that really is really common outside in when you know maybe if you have like a light through some leaves, a window with some leaves, a tree with some uh, leaves and such, then you can get these spots of light that you are trying to recreate here. And the sharper the knife, the quicker <laughs> it will be. So some holes like that and perhaps like that. So let's see where we add up. Okay, oh, I'm switching over back see, to the picture. You see all my lights is way too much <laughs> to, the, to the left. <laughs> where should I be then? I should be like over here. So I take some more holes. Like this. And even so this is the fun part, you know, when you really can <laughs> be creative and crazy with the knife. And I really would like to have some light over here. And perhaps up here. This is the last one. Oh. I Okay, so I just take this one, uh, three to one, and ta -da. where are we at? <laughs> ta -da. So I really would like to to uh, do one more thing. What if I do something like this? because I don't want the, bright, the right part to be diffused there. Oops. Oops. Oh, hey. Move it a bit closer to the light source so the holes will be uh, actually bigger. And this was the maximum height. Oh yeah, we had one of those short ones there. Yeah. Should I come and, and uh, <laughs> press the trigger? <laughs> I think I can do it. Oh, I have okay. one arm there. <laughs> Good. And let's see if I can get some holes to the right. I'll try this one. Just to see where I'm at. Of course I picked a short stand. <laughs> yeah, and we lost all the... Yeah, I was... I think just one more and then we're, <laughs> then we're done. <laughs> this is what you get when you have a lousy assistant like me <laughs> to do all the work yourself. <laughs> uh, I 
let's find the right spot for this one. So it's exactly where the camera wants to be. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's finish up with that one. <laughs> we got some bright spots in the face and we got something happening in the background. Yeah, and if I just could put the flag in front of the diffusion, then I would, could you know, get back the, ba the, the dark part here. Ah, yeah, exactly, the yeah. corner. Yeah. But now, I mean... Yeah, the time is running up. Time is running up. We're having, we're having a, a, a lot of fun. And this is what happens when, <laughs> when, you, when you shoot with David. Uh, there's so many uh, creative, fun things that you can do. Um, and, and we now looked at the, uh, one way of doing a, a, what you call a Vermeer corner, uh, which we had in, in the beginning. Uh, let's uh, shift over here. So you, here we have the, the Vermeer corner here, which kind of gives the illusion of, of having a, a, a corner and then the window maybe half a meter or a meter in uh, on the wall. And then you see the sunlight shining in. And then what we did, we added some uh, diffusion, which just looked like this first. He had got these funny marks on his face. And then we cut some holes. And then we cut some holes in it and to give some bright spots on the face yes. and also do some speckles and some spots here in the background. Can I borrow the, the arrow? Yes. Like, but when I see this now, Actually, I think that, you know, if we made bigger holes like that, we could really create some interesting shapes of light in the background here. Yeah. And um, so that's uh, really interesting. That's one, one way of, of actually just using simple, uh, uh, simple method. Yeah, I can switch over to that. Uh, simple method of, of uh, getting into uh, some more interesting uh, uh, backgrounds. And next week's episode, we will uh, debunk all the mysteries of uh, HSS and high-speed sync. Kind of how to use it and when to use it and what it does and what it doesn't do. Uh, I will be on my own as David and will actually be on uh, a little summer trip, you go going on a road trip. Yes, I'm going to, yeah. a, to a road trip, so I, will, I won't be helping you out there. No, so I'll be on my own yes. uh, with the big knife. Yes, with the big <laughs> knife, yes, of course. Maybe not, but we will talk about the uh, HSS and, uh, and how that works. So I, I hope you tune in and, uh, and, and check us out on uh, next week's episode if you have questions around HSS. Uh, we will now, after this episode, we will jump into um, our uh, all the different uh, comments uh, and uh, and respond back to you guys uh, on on the comments uh, in there so keep an eye on the comments and we will respond back uh, on any questions that you had can i can i just pop in super yeah. quickly because i see that uh, there's one andy. really common question here about from andy uh, he says i have done this a lot but the problem is that unlike can models move of course, but when you do this, now I put the can in front of the diffusion where I put the holes, but this is for creating backgrounds. And that is what's so great with backgrounds, they don't move. So you can create those super duper cool backgrounds and then put your moving model in front of it. So I would say that this thing with the diffusion, that is a perfect thing to do with backgrounds. Because the, the precision that, you, that I was playing with, like putting the lights just over the eye, of course, if you have a standing still model, but it's for the background. Backgrounds don't move, so we can be really precise with the light. Sorry, Anders, please oh. go on. Here we got Steve giving out some good tips for the, all the UK friends out there, the Tesco's. Uh, for 4.99 uh, pounds, you get a shower curtain, so that's also very good. And we got people from Florida, Austria, we had Mexico. And just trying to see if there's any questions uh, that popped up. We got Portugal, Dubai. I think we covered all the questions in here that popped up. One thing, if you cut hole in the shower curtain, 
we can't be responsible if you you know if you get water all over in your in your bathroom later. If you're going to use it as yeah. a shower curtain, no, yeah, yeah. So we <laughs> we do not take any responsibility no. for holes in shower curtains. No. But anyway, next week, uh, Wednesday, five o'clock, uh, it will be uh, HSS time. And uh, if you're interested to learn more about backgrounds, go into profoto.com and the academy section. Go into fundamentals of light lightings with David Bishop and uh, and check out the. Uh, how to light a background. There's these three courses, they're packed with content. I mean, it's so intense. You probably need to see it a couple of times because there's a lot of things happening in there. And it's not a lot of blabbering like we do here on Academy Live. This is more a relaxed <laughs> session. So we take the liberty of uh, chit chatting a yeah, little bit. Uh, blabbering. Uh, yeah. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the courses are really boom, 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 boom. It's delivering you know, good content uh, intensively. Uh, so I, I strongly rec recommend those. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us this week. Signing off, me and David. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, and we'll see you in two weeks. Yeah, two we'll weeks. Okay, yeah. cool. Bye-bye.